turns, and there shouldn't be too much luck involved, so I think it's going to be a really good set. Right, and when you look at the top quality of players, these are two of the guys that have really been at the top of their game recently. Uh, kind of different aspects, Joseph being kind of the ladder hero, and of course, you and Jeremy kind of just been running the table at all these regionals and internationals. So it should be a really good matchup between two great players. And I think oh, wow. kind of the important thing, I want to some of the important things here, uh, kind of some support Pokemon that have fallen out into the wayside. We have Pokemon like Venusaur on Joe's side. Uh, we saw the Cresselia yesterday uh, has some potential to kind of be a little bit cheeky with this Groudon. We saw a skill swap coming out yesterday. Uh, so maybe we see the old school get the floating Groudon, mm -hmm. and that could be a pretty big thing in this matchup, but a lot, of, a lot of little things that go into this. Yeah, well one of the interesting things uh, we noticed going into preparation for this is uh, Joe has a lot of special attackers that you've noticed. I think the Metagross being his only physical attacker on his side. Uh, so the Feedy with the Light Screen is going to be really, really hard for him to deal with, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see how he works around that uh, coming to this match. Yeah, uh, or even a Snarl from a Cinderor. I'm not yeah, sure. Snarl's sort of, like, just, a lot, just being able to mitigate that damage, of, especially on a team like this Evil Dawn team uh, doesn't do a whole lot of damage fast, really prefers to just kind of extend the games out and then pick up his KOs later in the game. So if you're able to block some of that damage, then really just sets yourself up better for the late game. But uh, we talk about not a lot of hyper offense from this team. We get Venusaur Groudon, which is kind the of most one, hyper offense, which is yeah. which is about as offensive as you can get. But we do see Jeremy taking it slow, uh, going with that tried and true uh, Feeny and Cinderor lead. So it's gonna be Jeremy probably looking to slow the game down a little bit here, rather than Joe's side as we previously expected. Yeah, Joe Joseph's looking here. Uh, he leads with the Venusaur and the Groudon, two Pokemon that are typically seen as like very, very strong, fast hitters. Uh, but the one thing to note is Venusaur likes putting things to sleep, but Feeny says, not right now. Right. I, don't, I don't see that happening. So. That's sleep uh, not being an option, so Venusaur kind of being forced to go on the offensive here, which normally doesn't have a problem with. Sometimes we have seen him run a Z-move like Brandon Beckley did at the World Championships. However, that Sludge Bomb will do a lot of damage to Feeny. Uh, not going to do that whatsoever. We actually did switch out for Incineroar. Interesting switch out to Incineroar here. Uh, the Intimidate is kind of nice onto Jeremy's Incineroar. Um, Maybe something but, like a flirt was fired into that slot. From yeah, the yeah. Roar. And not only that, but it could also take an icy wind well. It positions uh, for a fake out. It sets up for this Groudon to start doing a lot of damage. Right, we see the fake out from Jeremy's own center fired into that Groudon protect. So not when he takes something like maybe a fake out and an icy wind or fake out Nature's Madness potentially with Top of Fini. Like you mentioned in the team preview, setting up that light screen. So uh, we've seen Groudon and Venusaur. Uh, two special attackers, now their damage is mitigated. Um, Incineroar not doing a whole lot of damage to both of these Pokemon on Jeremy's side. So Jeremy uh, doing what this lead does best, getting his team set up for the rest of the game, and now if he wants to start switching around and start getting maybe his Groudon or his Zernia set up, he's free to do so. Yeah, at this point, I think uh, Joseph needs to start getting some damage on the field, which he is doing right now with a very strong eruption. On the two resistant hits, but I does still do... Oh, it wow. really doesn't do Less a whole... Than I was it doesn't do anything, really. Yeah. That Nature's Madness from top of Phoenix. Uh, now that eruption is doing even less from here on out. Yeah. So doing 50% of health, uh, that U-turn from Incineroar coming out, uh, going to allow Jeremy to go into whatever he wants in the back. So right now, uh, Groudon's on Jeremy's side is not looking like a horrible switch in. Well, especially considering that Groudon's uh, best option uh, is Fire Moves Eruption. That Cresselia is looking even better now, as the only way that the Groudon could previously hit it was a Sun Boost and Full Power Eruption, and now it's half power. So. The Joseph's ability to be seen that Cresselia has been diminishing, but as you're saying, Jeremy does opt to bring in that Groudon behind the light screen with the heal pulse and you know different supports that Feeny can bring in. Uh, but Joseph also opting to go for his U-turn, getting some better positioning, maybe bringing in something like that Venusaur again, or maybe even a Uveltal start cooking some foul plays. Right, foul play here does look like a pretty good option. Doesn't have to worry about Jeremy's Incineroar coming in. We did see that this is Sword Sands variant yesterday, so. Maybe trying to punish a potential sword stance here from Jeremy's side, or just get some big damage off on the board anyway. But we do see it's Venusaur coming back in. So Venusaur, um, like I said, can't put anything to sleep right now. Grass Knot's still going to do a good chunk of damage to Groudon. Sludge Bomb doing a decent chunk to top of Feeny. However, not really a knockout answer on the board right now because of that light screen. Now with that light screen in play, I feel maybe this turn we won't be seeing too much damage come out from Joseph's side. But I do feel like even the light screen is only reducing uh, all of the damage to 0.75 of what it's typically been doing. I do believe Joseph will be able to not get a KO this turn, but he can easily set himself up for getting a KO next turn. Right, and we could just see that Incineroar come back in. This poke situation right now where Incineroar really doesn't mind taking a hit in this situation. We actually do just see no switches. Uh, Venusaur does go on the offensive with that Grass Knot. 
doing about 20% to Groudon. And Joseph going first with his Groudon, firing off that Earth Power. That light screen, oh. though, critical hit on to Groudon through the light wow, screen. Yep. Big KO. And all of that work that Jeremy and put in and the heel pull. So nothing. probably going for either a Precipice Blades or a Swords Dance there. Uh, yeah. Big critical hit there. Very but that's big kind of, that is kind of the issue where you're trying to play defensive like that and you have the high yeah. offensive nature of the Venusaur Groudon. When you're moving first with strong Pokemon, you're putting your offense, you're putting your opponent at the risk of getting those critical hits. So while it's unfortunate, uh, is a situation where Joseph is just kind of forcing the issue. Yeah, well, I always say the longer that you, uh, the more defensive you play, the longer the game is going to right. be, which equates to the longer the game is playing out, the more turns that you have a chance you can get crit or flinched or something happening. So while it does still seem like that very very small percent chance, if you keep going like 20 turns or say, you know, you're going to have so many opportunities to have something like that happen. Um, so we do see Jeremy forfeiting for that game one. And so yeah, really just realizing that, okay, uh, without my Groudon on here, I'm losing a big damage dealer on my team. Knowing that without being able to pick up those knockouts, probably just doesn't want to reveal any more information about what he's got left. Uh, keeping that back on important, I think it's, keeping that back oh, yeah, on hidden definitely. is very important. Like we saw the Incineroar, but y if you're Joseph, you don't know, okay, maybe it's that Salamence, is it Xerneas, or is it that Cresselia? Um, still leaves you guessing as to how, if that Groudon was would have survived, how Jeremy would have played out that endgame. It's also interesting to note, we didn't see a fourth Pokemon from either of these players. Right. Um, I do feel Joseph actually could have had either of three of his Pokemon, and Jeremy also could have had either of his Pokemon. So, conserving that information is really, really big, just on both ends. Right, so, well, big, that game really we didn't get a whole lot. Like, we saw the top of Feeny moveset, but we saw things that we were already expecting to see. Yeah. Um, so if you're Joseph, really, I think he's kind of go to the, back to the drawing board. We saw how much work that Tapu Fini put in that game. Uh, that light screen was doing so much, and had that critical hit not come through, Groudon look on Jeremy's side was looking like it was just going to be able to run through that game. So yeah. if you're him, I think, well, it's great that you want to play this offensive game. You got to make sure you get it down on the right targets, and I think getting rid of that Tapu Fini is a very big priority of his. Well, being at this level, you've got, they've got to, you know, Joseph has to realize that the game would have been different uh, without the crit. Right. So he may need to think, like, okay, how did I get into that position? What can I do? How do I do this differently so that I don't have to be in that position? Exactly. How can I start this a little bit differently? And we do see the complete switch up here. Uh, Tapu Koko and Metagross here. Um, so much better at dealing with Tapu Fini. Uh, could see something like Thunderbolt and an Iron Head launch into that slot. So Tapu Fini, not safe. However, Incineroar is a great partner for these guys as the lead. Uh, we could see like a fake out light screen again, or we could see a U-turn, icy one switch to Groudon. Uh, so a lot of this is kind of the great this the great u utilization of this lead. Like, okay, I'm not in the best spot with what I got out in the field, but I can always switch around and get myself be set up better. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Venus or Groudon is what I would typically think of as like the most offense that this team can put out in one turn. But Coco Metagross doing a very good job of that too, also. Right. We do see it is Cresselia as the last Pokemon here. So. Um, getting in, maybe we see that trick up. We see a Nature's Madness fired into that slot. So uh, most, most likely trying to get a Stomping Tension follow up. Too. Yeah. Getting that, so good switch in by Jeremy. Oh, we see Heal Pull, so even better switch in. So Cresselia getting in for, yeah. for free Actually there. Actually, free there. Everybody's at full HP. We're still sitting as if nothing has ever happened. Nobody mega evolved. No Z moves have been used. We're all just right back where we started. Right, <laughs> however, uh, Nature's Madness, uh, maybe on these. Evil Dawn teams, we saw in the top four of the World Championships that it was Guardian of Alola. We haven't seen a Cresselia item, so maybe we've seen like a Guardian of Alola Iron Head take out this Cresselia. So, or we could see it fired in the top of Fini slot. So a lot of damage potential coming out from this from this Coco Metagross still. But Jeremy opting, actually, he does not want that Cresselia on the field. Most likely fearing that uh, Tempunium Z Iron Head if Joseph does have that on his team. Sadly, the Intimidate going off, still not actually lowering that Metagross's attack as he uh, wisely chose to not Mega Ball. Right, Mega Ball, Mega Evolution does come out now. Uh, Mega Metagross getting that Tough Claws boost. Um, and we do see it is that that Z move, and with that dance, that is the Tapunium Z coming out. So oh, yeah. Guardian of Alola uh, will be coming down on a, one of these two Pokemon. Um, Interesting to note, um, both of these Pokemon typically, and I'm not 100% certain, uh, if Jeremy has done this correctly, uh, but both of these Pokemon do typically do uh, EV train, so that they get hit right down to their 50% barrier. Right, and then just pop right back up. They pop right back up to 75. 
So it is another Incineroar, so we'll have to see. We have seen some Assault Vest Incineroar today, but if it is that berry, like you were saying, it could be, it would pop right back up, and we do see all that damage with the berry, there so Incineroar is, yep. getting back up to a very healthy amount. And it's an Iron Head double up. So Jeremy kind of running running laps around Joe right now, just fire, just switching that slot in and out, uh, getting the correct switches each time, getting some good chip onto this Metagross. And now, uh, kind of back in that same position as turn one, except Metagross at 50% and Incineroar as well. And we've already seen the Z-move burn, which is quite interesting. Uh, I feel like, especially when Yveltal's not on the field, Joseph's answers to uh, Cresselia getting up a Trick Room are very low. So now seeing that he has burned that strong, strong Z-move, uh, which would be a really good option to that Cresselia. I feel Jeremy might have an easier time getting up a Trick Room in the end game, or even potentially now with the switch out, I think. That is Cresselia and we, and we just back see in. the switches continue. Uh, Cresselia yep. coming back in for that Incineroar. Nature's Madness in the top of Feeny. Uh, maybe you see an Iron Head double up here. Definitely and it is that Iron Head coming out. So Metag Metagross going to barely oh. miss the KO on top of Feeny. So hanging that on with like about one, one HP, HP right there. Yeah. Getting that berry back above 50%. And a heal pulls. No crit. But however, no, no flinch. <laughs> However, Cresselia's HP is already full, so going to be perfectly okay. And Tapafini, uh, not exactly safe right now. We have seen Jeremy switching that Incineroar in and out, so wouldn't be surprised if it comes in for that Tapafini slot here. Just take some more damage, takes, yep. Take some more damage. What Incineroar does best. Sponge the hit. Um, if you're Joseph, though, this Cresselia is a problem. Um, Trick Room here is going to be... Like, if Jeremy does have Trick Room, Trick Room, there's no more Guardian below, like you said. So getting up that Trick Room is going to be much easier for him. And if there is, like, a Groudon in the back, that's really something you don't want to see if you're Joseph. Yeah, look at this right now. Uh, if I'm Joseph, I definitely think I want to either take out this Feeny, or maybe even, if I have an Incineroar in the back, try to get the Volt Switching going on. Uh, see if I can position a little better, maybe to absorb the Groudon that might be trying to come in soon. Right, or even um, if you have your own Incineroar. Your own Incineroar yeah. is a great Definitely. way to get out of this trick. We saw it out with some fake outs, the Intimidate, forcing Groudon, maybe go for that Swords Dance, having to just burn turns of trick, and then you finally get out of it where you can get some hits off. Um, and we see that uh, no switches from Joseph's side. That Tom Feeney does switch out for the Incineroar. Uh, Volt Switch, though, does come out from top of Go Go. Decent little chip damage there on the Incineroar. And I have to see what he brings in here. Cresselia, uh, still so has to be probably better seeing that, uh, not having to worry about taking Nature's Madness. We do see this Groudon coming out from Joseph's side, so going to be putting on a lot of offensive pressure, uh, and especially with Cresselia and Sidney Groudon, not exactly the most offensive pairing that's out there in the game. So Groudon, uh, regardless of what happens here with speed control, is still going to be able to get off a really strong hit next turn, barring something like a fake out from Sidney yeah, it's interesting to see. Uh, seeing that Volt Switch, I feel like the Iron Head will be targeting the Incineroar this turn. It's actually not a Celia. And... Does get off the trigger, so... Okay. Joseph, kind of hoping for that RNG. That was a scary turn, yeah, that, I gotta that, be that, honest. That is that. a little bit scary there, because... <laughs> anyone dude, who plays VGC will tense up at least a little bit when that happens. Right. Iron Head, uh, known for that flinch chance, hasn't really been rolling today. We saw in the last set with Alex uh, not getting either Iron Head flinch, and now Joseph not getting it. So, really great spot now for Jeremy. You get that trick from up. Um, Incineroar, great option. We can see like, a fake out into Groudon and a switch out from Cresselia into Groudon. Yeah. And then team goes to town. Um, I, I think if we don't see a uh, Protect from Metagross, we can easily see a Flare Blitz. But if we do see a Protect from Metagross, like you were saying, I think there's so much that Jeremy can do to capitalize on that this turn. I think Jeremy just kind of has to try... I think it's, the game is in Jeremy's hands to try to close out this end game. And I think Joseph tries. Uh, Joseph has to try to find out what Jeremy's game plan is and try to capitalize on that. But it's actually... We were talking about Incineroar going on offense. We actually Incineroar switches off a crowd on here. So really risky play from Jeremy. Uh, we saw that Joseph is carrying Earth Power ground up. Uh, Metagross often carries Stomping Tantrum. I was going to say Stomping Tantrum too, I believe, would so, be a very good double. And ground on really doesn't want to take either, but we talk, about the, we talk swap. about the skill swap yep. in team preview, bringing back the floating ground on the floor from 2016. Uh, now, ah, eruption though. What a great call from Joseph not falling for that potential and just going for that eruption, doing good damage to Cresselia. And we see an iron head come out as well into that slot, so. Relentless. It's going to be able to pick up the KO. So great call from Joseph there. Uh, had a lot of potential to go wrong had he fired some ground type attacks into that Incineroar slot, but instead punishing the Cresselia. But, however, if you're Cresselia, you kind of did your job that game. You got you got the trick of up. You have Groudon floating. Um, Chavo Fini, now, um, there's really nothing to hit Groudon. So, we can see something like a heal pulse onto the Groudon, something like Sword Stance. And this yeah. Groudon's just in a really great position to try and take this game home. Well, one of the biggest issues for uh, Jeremy's Groudon at this point in the game is Yveltal, I think. Now that it's in the air, obviously. And I feel 
jo Joseph might have the Avalto on the back, but if he doesn't, I think he's in for a pretty rough time. Uh, a bullet punch actually comes out. Is that type of thing? I guess he's just trying to just wanting to get, get all the damage yeah, he can. Get, yeah. Not sure if this Groudon's going to attack or not. Just getting that guaranteed damage off on top of me. There is that heal pull, so Groudon uh, right back up to right full back after full. that eruption. And it is the sword stance oh, coming out from him. Wow. So getting that boost. Uh, plus two floating Groudon in front of Metagross Groudon. Devastating. Yep. Uh, not something you probably want to see coming out I was going to say, I, 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 Joseph uh, going for the Earth Power too. He did not want to fire that eruption off, fearing that he would be taking a precipice blades earlier right. on in this turn. And Top of oh Fini hanging God. on, actually. I was so, expecting the animation yeah, I thought, painting. I, I thought that was the KO. Top of Fini, once again, held on wow. with one to get the berry, holding on with one now. Absolute trooper for Absolutely, Jeremy. Yes. And normally you have the press of his blades option here, and you want to switch your evil tall in, but with that Top of Fini going, not going down, evil tall now has to worry about taking something like a Nature's Madness, which is something it really doesn't want to take. We see Top of Fini actually want to switch out, though. Uh, probably trying to take that bullet punch right. that most likely is going in that side. Incineroar coming in, uh, big Intimidate's coming down onto the Metagross, that bullet punch is going to be doing even less now, but more importantly, um, has some fake out pressure for next turn, we see a Protect from Groudon, uh, likely signifying that this Metagross actually also protected, so just a passive turn here from Joseph, just trying to stall out this Trick Room, Make doesn't want to have to deal with this Groudon anymore inside of it, maybe has something in the back, we know Tapu Koko's in the back, uh, maybe it's something like Venusaur or Evil Hall, they're just trying to help deal with it, both of which do not want to see this intruder whatsoever. Oh yeah, with the Fear of Precipice Blades coming out, we know at this point that at least three of Joseph's Pokemon are on the ground, so Jeremy can click Precipice Blades this turn, and I think he's basically, as long as he connects, guaranteed at least one KO. Right. And especially with that combination of maybe even a Flare Blitz or a U-turn, he's going to either get like some more damage or some positioning, or he basically is going to be getting a lot of this turn. It's, it'll be interesting to see how Joseph pivots around that. Exactly. So. Um, honestly, kind of a big turn in the game, right here. Um, one misstep from either player really can just put this game to put this game to bed. We can be seeing a game three, but I think the big question mark is really what does Joseph have in the back? Is it that Venusaur? Is it that Evil Tall? Oh, we do see a switch. We see Groudon on switch out, so maybe signifying what that is here, and we get the. Top of Coco, Coco coming back in, okay. so really just kind of sacrificing that to a precipice blade. We blades. may see a second switch. I don't know how the speed tiers interact. It might be a... Groudon was going first, okay. trick, but Metagross not switching out, sacrificing itself more than likely. And Both of these Pokemon saying, hey, we did our jobs. Right. Precipice Blades is coming out, but that's okay. <laughs> right. So we're coming back for that Top of Fini. Uh, have to assume Groudon's going for that Precipice Blades here. Absolutely. Uh, Top of Fini coming back, resetting that Misty Terrain. Uh, not really, Terrain not really the utmost importance here. So, Groudon, Fire Punch oh. actually. So maybe okay. trying to catch that Evil Tall. And we see that Top of Coco going down. Not sure, really big call there by Jeremy. Especially now he loses the Top of Fini as yeah. well. So that's one less opportunity where if he repressed up his blades there, he could have came back and of course you can sacrifice Top of Fini on turn, you can bring the Incineroar back in for a fake out. Yep. For the Pokemon in the back. Now the Groudon comes back in and there's still you don't like there's no option for like something like a fake out fire punch on the Evil yeah. Tall for yeah. Well now we see an easy play, I mean I'm assuming from Joseph, which is a don't, don't protect. protect. Yeah. Stop that fake out. Fake out's gone for the rest of the game. And seeing if there's a Yveltal in the back, they do typically carry foul play, so I don't yeah, think we that Groudon's too we, happy to we, be plus two. We, right have, we have seen foul play from Joseph's Evil Tall in earlier rounds, so if it is that Evil Tall, uh, Joseph's probably feeling really happy about that, and Jeremy's got to probably feel a little bit uneasy. Uh, very simple player, like you mentioned, your double protect from Joseph's side. Just get this fake out stalled out, and KO the Incineroar next turn, I would have to assume, or just go for something like an eruption, stopping tantrum. It was kind of interesting. We didn't see him bring the Eveltal in. Um, right. And seeing as the Groudon can't really hit Jeremy's Groudon, it's interesting to see that he would send that in first. As so maybe we actually won't see the Eveltal in that. Right. It could be that Venusaur, which is probably the best case for Jeremy right now. Absolutely. However, yeah. it's floating, so it is. It is. It can be targeted ah, by Sleep Powder now. So that's true. That's not true. exactly the safest thing to bring. You have to assume Groudon's going to be clicking Eruption here. Uh, Cinnamon has lost its Berry. Stomach Tantrum. This matter is like minus two. It's minus three. two or three at this point, but, but that's still, still enough to still KO. There's the sheer power of that Metagross's base attack in tandem with the Tough Claws. And this type of target eruption is going to do a lot. Uh, about half damage, I would assume, at this point. A little right, under right half. 
and is that precipice blades that comes out double connect. Double connect. So big step forward there for Jeremy. However, uh, that eruption damage, this is well within a foul play KO range However, for the evil tall. I do, I do know uh, if the situation were to ever arise that from full HP, Jeremy's Groudon would take a foul play when it's a plus two. But that doesn't look like foul, uh, doesn't, that doesn't look like full HP to me. No. So and it is the oh, sword. So, okay. This. So what you're saying is, there's a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. Um, this Groudon we see is bulkier, so we could just see Venusaur go for a double grass knot potentially. Not sure if that's going to KO, but maybe see Groudon go for protect. So wanting to scout out what this Venusaur is going to be going for. Okay. Fair. It is that grass knot, so okay. jo jo Joseph believe he take, can get that yeah, KO. taking his chances with the, the two-hit KO rather than hitting a sleep powder, losing a turn, then missing like another sleep powder potentially. So there's the grass knot. How much is this going to do? Easy two-hit oh, KO. Oh, uh, yeah. It's about 45% in ground. Fire punch coming out. Uh, going to bring it down to his focus sash. And I guess the... Tapovini kind of coming back to bite him there. No burn chance. No yeah. burn chance. I think there. he may have been protecting uh, two turns ago, trying to see if he can get that misty terrain to go right. away. With the grass knot does come back out from Venusaur. No chlorophyll, no problems. Groudon goes down, and Joseph Fagarte uh, takes that in a 2-0 fashion. Wow, that was that was kind of a strange turn of events. I was thinking uh, from a game that there was so like much back and forth, like the, with. You know, Joseph, be, uh, we were all thinking, like, oh, he's got a Yveltal. And then, like, Jeremy, we were like, oh, he's got this floating Groudon with the plus two. He has so much offense. And then there was just kind of these back and forth, like, surprises, I guess you could say, like the fire punch, the not having Yveltal. That right. And you got to wonder if that was just a precipice blade there from Jeremy. Uh, you're forcing Yveltal Groudon out of the field. That's in a much better situation for you as a whole. Uh, Metagross, of course, taking that KO on Incineroar. If you have the Incineroar left for the Venusaur, it's a much better situation. And kind of... Like you're saying, it was a weird game because it seemed like Jeremy was in control of that. He was getting his Trick Room s strategy set up. He got the Groudon floating. He got the plus two. Had the threat of Precipice Blades. But Joseph was just able to maneuver around that, limit the damage very well, get out of the Trick Room, and then just clean things up with the Venusaur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was definitely interesting. Uh, I think the biggest, biggest thing was losing that top of Vinny, like you were saying. It was, even if he didn't get the KO on Metagross, um, I think it would have been okay if he still had the top of Vinny alive. Right. I think being forced to bring that Incineroar in and having the Intimidate go off and having the fake out be burned, I think that was just that was basically where uh, the game was kind of over. Because you point. have to think the turn where he didn't uh, press the turn where he fire punched, there were still two turns of Trick Room left. So yep. he comes in, and then the next turn you have the double protector to stall out the Trick Room. You have the Feeny out. If he would have pressed his double KO'd, you, you can take advantage of the double protect. Hard switch that top of Phoenix into Incineroar, then you have fake out Precipice Blades to win the game next turn. Yep, that, so. that's kind of how I was seeing it going. But right. uh, it, as I said, a couple surprises, a couple different interesting plays coming out from both players. Uh, but the set to end, did, did end up going 2-0 in Joseph's favor, and he'll be moving on to top four, most likely the second match after this. So. Right, so uh, we'll be back here in a few moments with uh, the winner's interview with Joseph Ugarte, and stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we are here with your previous top eight winner, Joseph Ugarte, or as uh, it's being referred to now as Brick UX9. <laughs> uh, Joseph, how are you feeling after that match? I'm feeling great. Um, this this match, like, uh, it was it was a matchup that was in my favor, but I was definitely still nervous going into it. Jeremy's a good player, you know. Um, he obviously has a lot of achievements, but um, I'm pretty happy about the way it went. I'm feeling really excited. Like I, I know I can like take this tournament, and like I'm really like I've practiced so much for this, so I'm really excited to keep playing. So we're we're excited for you. We've all seen how much work you've been putting in on the ladder recently, but I kind of want to talk about that game a little bit. So game one, uh, really looking a little tough. Uh, Jeremy had yeah. really great defensive pivoting. 
Uh, what like getting that light screen set up, getting the Incineroar switching it out, weakening your team, um, and then you score that big critical hit. Yeah, that crit completely shifted the game in my favor. I, um, knowing his, so I was looking at his ground on the day before, and I was looking at its EVs and seeing its HP numbers. Based on what I assumed it was, it should have lived that Earth Power. Um, I still needed to go for that just in case because he could also punish it with a sword stance or something. I didn't see what the Groudon did exactly, but he said I expected your Groudon to protect. So even then, if he got a Blaze off, his Groudon's still in range of the next Earth Power. It was kind of a weird turn. Like definitely the crit helped me so much because like I didn't even have to worry about it at that point. The game was lost for him. Right, shifting momentum, and then so with how grindy that game was and with that potential critical hit, seeing how close it could have been. Yeah. Uh, how did that affect your mindset going into game two? I think game two, um, it made me realize. So when I when I saw his team, um, obviously I still had to count for Xerneas just in case it came, but I figured it would be better to like you know be a little more aggressive in the beginning, which is why I like Coco Metagross, just because Nature's Madness plus Iron Head and Stomping Tantrum does a lot to his team. Um, and basically I needed a change of pace because I figured he would be really prepared for a Venu Dun lead, and I went with the approach of keeping it in the back instead because I thought that would be a good like change up, especially too because it could beat the ground on in the end game if I chip it enough. Right, so. and we saw that work out perfectly. Yeah. So uh, great adaptation and strategy there. Glad it worked out for you. Really looking forward to seeing how this goes in top yeah, four, man. It's going to be a good match. Best this is a good interaction, I be think. Best of luck to you, man. We will be back shortly with our top four here at the Knoxville Regional Championships. Bye, everyone.